Hey everyone, it's Bobby from Lyco Birds, and I am at Rose Valley Lake in Gamble Township, Pennsylvania, to do a virtual field trip. So for those of you not familiar with the location, Rose Valley Lake is one of the best birding spots in all of North Central Pennsylvania, and it's one of my personal favorites. And I am starting off here at the South Boat Launch area, and I can already hear some warblers in the trees behind me so let's get started and see what we find there was quite a bit of warbler activity in the trees at the south boat launch that's a a good spot generally in migration to check for um, mixed flocks of songbirds so there were warblers some vireos and and other songbirds mixed in so this is some of the stuff that was there this is a yellow rumped warbler you can see the yellow shoulder patches here that are characteristic of that species this is actually a young song sparrow it is kind of a messy looking bird not not uh, the classic plumage you think of with adult song sparrows but um, you can see this this is a young one and second angle you can see kind of here at the gape that's how you know that it's a young one that's got that fleshy gape still and black capped chickadee up in the tree that's always a good species to listen for during migration because other songbirds tend to be in the groups with chickadees and chickadees tend to be a little more vocal so they're um, an, an easy way to pick out the mixed flocks and then this is actually a magnolia warbler, and we can tell that by the presence of the wing bars, the eye ring, yellow throat, yellow chest, with some streaking in the flanks, and then especially by this tail with that broad white tail base and the broad black tail tip. This is a red-eyed vireo, one of the most common species you're going to see in the, in the mixed flocks early in September. Very common breeding bird in Pennsylvania and extremely common um, migrant species in mixed flocks. And this is a black-throated green warbler. You can see the kind of the yellowish face with the, the black in the chest and the, the flanks. And after a few minutes of watching the mixed flock, the birds started generally moving back towards this section of trees which is a little harder to get to and you can't really uh, pick through the flock as well from back there so I did grab a couple of flight shots though as the birds were moving there this is actually a Nashville warbler that um, was moving from tree to tree you can see kind of that gray head yellow body and the well-defined uh, white eye ring and then a black throated blue warbler with that dark blue upper side, the black throat, and the the white at the um, the base of the uh, the wings there. So yeah, and then um, once the once the birds moved back in away from the trees, there wasn't uh, much I could do to pick through them. Um, there were a couple other species that weren't pictured. Um, blue gray gnat catcher was in that mixed flock. Um, and they're they're getting harder to find by early September, um, and also chestnut-sided warbler was in that flock, and I could hear a rose-breasted grosbeak calling as well. I'm now at the road at the south end of the lake. This road goes towards the south boat launch where we started, but I am near what we call the South Causeway area. And I am going to walk up this road and see what's around. You can hear a few things um, right now. There's a Carolina wren singing. There's some swallows flying around. So let's see what we can find. The swallows were predominantly barn swallows with um, a few tree swallows mixed in. Those were the only two species present that I saw. And they were visible from just about all parts of the lake. There were a lot flying low over the water 
and um, there were also quite a few flying over the land. Um, and like I said, the predominant species was barn. So we can see a couple of pictures here. You can see the, the long forked tail with the orange underside. Again, the, the long tail. This one's a, a whiter example. And it's the only swallow species that we have with this white band in the tail. And you can see the outer tail feathers also um, are longer with that long forked tail appearance of the barn swallow. And as I walked up that road, um, I found this little red squirrel. It was, um, it looked like it was eating something on the road. And then it, um, as I kept walking, it scurried into a tree. Um, and then I got to this section, which is always, um, always productive. There's almost always uh, quite a few birds here. And you can see if you walk just a little bit further, you get a, a restricted view of the, uh, the one section of the lake. But in that section, I had a dark-eyed junco up in a tree, uh, just kind of sat there for a few minutes. That's um, not a typical species I think of at the lake um, in September, but they nest up on the nearby mountains, so it's it's not terribly surprising that, that one made its way down to the lake. And then... Um, Mostly the other stuff was down low in the brush. So you can see this female common yellow throat. Um, they were quite plentiful at the lake. So, and, and they're always uh, all throughout the brush along the edge of the lake. Um, it's one of the, the most common species that you'll find there. And also near the common yellow throat was this brown thrasher that was being fairly skulky. It did not come out for any sort of open view, but you can see it's um, definitely looking at me. And here's another common yellow throat. This is an adult male. And a downy woodpecker in the tree. Um, some other stuff that was in that area. Uh, I know there was a, a scarlet tanager. And I saw quite a few cat birds heard some bluebirds singing and um, there were also some hummingbirds i saw one or two hummingbirds flying around in that stretch so then i made my way back towards the south causeway area and this is the view looking south from there into that small uh kind of uh the the pond area that the the beavers try and keep nice and calm um, and there was a blue heron in there and also um, there was one wood duck there's normally more wood ducks in there than that but this morning there were only um, only the one and then on the other side there were actually two pied-billed grebes and um that's a species that's just starting to arrive this fall. So that was a, a nice sighting. But that was it for the south end of the lake. And then I um, got in the car and headed around to the other side. So I am now on the road along the east side of the lake. And I like to bird here in the fall because of all the brush. There's often sparrows and indigo buntings and sometimes some of the lower warblers. So we're gonna walk along this road and see what we find. You can already hear there's a lot of bird activity. You can hear blue jays and catbirds and chickadees. And a hummingbird just flew past. So should be a, a good little stretch here. As I was walking along uh, the road right along the edge of the lake where it's open, um, I started seeing quite a few birds up in the trees. There were um, at least probably 10 red-winged blackbirds that flew in. And also cedar waxwings were most plentiful in this section of the lake. Um, there was a, a decent flock there. Also in the, um, the low brush 
right along the lake, I saw two least fly catchers interacting. And there was a swamp sparrow that was feeding on the, uh, the gravel. And a kill deer flew over, calling, circled a couple of times. And then off in the distance, I spotted a juvenile bald eagle that was soaring fairly low over the, um, the lake. I think it was probably looking for breakfast. Um, so then, um, as I got past that stretch, you get into a slightly different habitat where um, there's not as many trees and it's mostly just low brush on the lakeside and then um, it's like a, a cornfield on the other side of the road. So in that stretch, I always have quite a few hummingbirds this time of year. Um, so there were, um, I saw probably two or three hummingbirds in that section. Here's one that, that was perched on a, a small branch. Um, indigo buntings are also very plentiful in that area. Um, it's the best part of the lake to find them. Um, so you're not really going to find any all blue ones at this point in the year, but um, you'll see some that are kind of this patchwork of brown and blue, and um, a lot of them are all brown as well for the like the females. Catbirds are also very common in the brush along the lake there. And in this section, I also was able to see the lesser scop that has been hanging out at the lake all summer. It first arrived in May. So then on my way back, you can see um, just another habitat shot. And near that, I found this very shy house wren that did not want to come out and pose for me. And right as I was getting back to my car, I saw this yellow-bellied sapsucker. You can see the uh, generally a woodpecker's shape, but it's got this vertical um, white stripe here in the wings, which is diagnostic to, to sapsuckers. And, of course, yellow-bellied sapsucker is the only species in range. So, yeah, then I headed around uh, up to the, the north end of the lake to check that out. So I am going to start wrapping up here at the north end of the lake in the area we call the large clay lot. Um, a lot of people are starting to show up, so um, and the, as we get later into the morning the bird activity is starting to die down, so uh, I'm going to give it another five or ten minutes here and see if we can find anything else, but then I'm going to wrap up. By this point in the morning, the thermals were starting to build, so some turkey vultures started popping up. Um, there weren't too many, but um, a small group, and there were uh, probably five or six of those. I also found another Nashville warbler, so that was nice. That's um, a species that we don't have here in the summer, so this uh, these would be migrant birds. And that makes sense considering the, the date, um, you know, they're, they're migrating through in, in decent numbers in September. Um, in, in this stretch, um, at the north end of the lake, there was also this belted kingfisher who was flying around and uh, making all kinds of noise like kingfishers do. And a shot from the other side. Um, and then as I got up to the north causeway area i saw this green heron who was perched out um, on uh, some rocks in the in the water doing his best american bittern impression with that bill held up in the air uh, there was also a solitary sandpiper that was way across on the uh, the far bank you can't really see that too well and then also in that section was a double-crested cormorant. And then at this point, things were really getting slow. There were a lot of people um, starting to show up with it being a holiday weekend, a lot of kayakers starting to put in. Um, so I wrapped up. And I will just wrap up quickly with a look at the checklist. Um, so as you can see, I had 59 total species in a little bit over two hours. The only flagged species on eBird was the lesser scop that had been there the entire summer. Um, 
And I think we covered most of the highlights. The pied billed grebe was nice. Solitary sandpipers, decent bird for the lake. Um, the least fly catchers were nice. Warbling vireo um, is a species that's hit or miss at this point in the year. Uh, blue gray gnat catcher can also be hit or miss. So it's nice to, to get a few more of those before they're gone for the year. Um, the dark eyed junco, like I said, they, they nest up on the mountain, but you don't see too many of them in the, in the summer. So nice to, um, start seeing them in, in some of these, uh, migrant spots and, um, uh, an okay mix of warblers getting the, the Nashvilles, um, was nice, but, um, not a, not an outstanding day for Rose Valley in September and, uh, still, Still quite a few indigo buntings hanging on. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to comment um, either on YouTube or on Facebook and let me know so I know to make more of these. Um, and make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to our channel on YouTube and um, follow our Facebook page for uh, daily ID quizzes and other content and I will see you next time.